Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's right. We are still in the Easter season. We talked about our church calendar a little bit in Sunday school this morning. You notice that um, our Easter season is a lot longer than just Easter Sunday. And as Christians, we should be celebrating Easter every day. Because we do serve a risen Lord and Savior. So it's good to be in the house of the Lord with you this morning. You may have noticed it's a little bit brighter in here. I, I thank Ed and his son, Eddie, for, for helping uh, replace all the light bulbs. And, and we had a number of them that were out. And we had gotten a little bit brighter in here. So um, even on this rainy day, we can... We can enjoy the, the light, and hopefully uh, the fire can see a little bit better this morning. And, uh, and thank you for the, for the work of the trustees. You, you'll notice that there's little things that will be getting done over the next few weeks. Um, one of them is, you might not notice, but our piano was taken this week and fixed and brought back. So we're thankful for that as well. And thankful to those who, who give... Uh, to the church so that we can maintain and, and, and keep things in, in working order here. So I invite you to turn over to the announcements. There's not a whole lot uh, of announcements there. Um, one that I, I don't have in there is our painting of the fence. And I believe it's May 20th. That's what I had in my trustees notes. and. And I, I haven't heard any, any other objections to that. So if you are able to come out that Saturday on the 20th and help the trustees paint the fence, we would greatly appreciate it. If you can't make it, that, that's fine. But um, I'll, I'll have that bulletin next Sunday. Just a reminder that next Saturday is our men's breakfast. And I invite all men to come and share with us in fellowship as we enjoy some good food uh, provided by Jerry Cease and his amazing cooking that he does. Uh, if you're here for the Easter breakfast, that gives you a little bit of a, a clue of what we're in for. So men of all ages are, are invited uh, to join us Saturday at 8 a.m. And make sure that if you have a, a man in your, your life and they're not here this morning, let them know uh, to come and enjoy a, a free breakfast with us next Saturday. And also next Sunday there is the women's group meeting which will be held after worship. And I guess you all aren't having a breakfast. Maybe you all have nothing over. Oh, I'm sure there will probably be nothing there. <laughs> Maybe we'll share are there any other announcements? Seeing none, let us now turn our hearts and minds over to the purpose that we came here for, which is to worship our risen Lord and Savior this morning. I invite you to quiet your, yourselves and your minds and your heart this morning as the light of Christ is brought into the sanctuary and the prelude is played before us. Thank mm -hmm. you. Dear Heavenly Father, you have sent the Good Shepherd to us. 
so that we may enter into the gate and be considered one of the flock. Lord, we give you thanks for our Redeemer, the Lamb of God, who was slain for our sins, who arose from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father. For that we give you thanks and praise, and today we sing joyfully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I invite you to stand as you are able and sing the first hymn, number 617. I come with joy. Mm -hmm.
The scripture comes from Peter 9, uh, verses 25, 19. For it, is, for it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do not write and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you shall follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no death was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins, we might live for righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed, for you were going to stray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends your reading of God's word. lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse, verses 1 through 10, and if you want to follow along, it's on page 103. I'll, I'll be reading from the uh, Christian's uh, standard version. And we saw in the reading from the New Testament that Patty shared that Peter is talking about this shepherd. And John 10 is often referred to as the good shepherd chapter. Truly I tell you, anyone who doesn't enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all his own outside, he goes ahead of them. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will never follow a stranger. Instead, they will run away from them. Instead, because they don't know the voice of strangers. Jesus gave them this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Jesus said again, Truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. If anyone enters by me, they will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, my Rock and my Redeemer, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. May your word be spoken this morning and your word heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So who is the Lamb of God? Who is the good shepherd? Who is the gatekeeper? Who is the gate? 
These are questions that we might have when we read this passage from John. And we see Jesus answers, I am. So as a former shepherd, since I have no sheep of my own anymore, I guess I'm a former, I don't know if it's a once a shepherd, always a shepherd kind of thing. This is one of my favorite weeks that I was looking forward to in Easter because it is the week of the shepherd. It is the week that we are focusing on who our shepherd is and who are the sheep. And in biblical times, the sheep would follow their shepherds. Oftentimes today, we just drive them somewhere. We load them into a trailer and take them from place to place. But in biblical times, the sheep would follow their shepherd. And they would often know who their shepherd was just by hearing their voice. Their shepherd was the one who kept them safe. The one who led them to water and pastures. So they trusted their shepherd and they would not trust anyone else. So growing up on a sheep farm, I have plenty of experience when it comes to, to sheep. And I have shared before about how frustrating sheep can be. And I know that's why God compares us to sheep. Because we often don't go where God wants us. We can certainly be frustrating, I'm sure, to him. But as a sheep farmer, I got to have some of my favorite sheep. And they were sheep that I got to name. And, and I know one of them was one that I, I raised from a bottle. And I named her Rachel. And she was such a unique little lamb because she would come running whenever I'd go to the barn and she'd hear my voice. So when I read this passage, I thought of my little lamb, Rachel, who knew my voice and wanted to be with me and not with the rest of the sheep. I also had this you that came to us, and I'm not, I'm, I should have asked my dad how we got Betsy, but she came to us through someone else. Yeah, yeah we got it, got it from uh, the uh, present teacher one time. Oh, that's right. One of the guys that my dad worked with. But Betsy became my sheep, and she would also come when I would come around, and she just wanted to be right there beside me. And I, I remember she was a, a big you. And when she died, I wanted her to, to be close. So she was one that I asked my dad if he could bury her on the farm because I didn't want her just to be turned into compost. You know, she, she held a special place in my heart. There were other sheep that weren't mine. They belonged to my brothers, and they had nothing to do with me. And it's so interesting to see how those sheep acted. And they knew who was their shepherd. So just like we see in this passage from John, the sheep would follow their shepherds. They trust their shepherd. They knew who would keep them safe and lead them to the things that they needed and not lead them astray. And in those days, they would have these sheep pens that were often out in the wilderness. Because often, the wilderness was a dangerous place for a sheep to be. There were things out there that wanted the sheep for their own. Not just thieves, but wolves and other wild animals. So these shepherds, they would build these 
stone walls and make this sheet pen. And there would be one way in and one way out. And oftentimes there would be a person that was in charge of being the gatekeeper and closing the gate or standing watch. And the gatekeeper would let the shepherd in and out. And if the gatekeeper didn't know the shepherd, they wouldn't be allowed to come in and take sheep out of this pen because they were most likely thieves trying to steal someone else's lambs. And did you know that our sanctuary is set up like these sheep pens? It's, it's interesting because we don't always visually see it. But our altar rail here is like the sheep pen. It's a visual for us to, to show us that there's something sacred about the sanctuary here. I know oftentimes we call the whole place a sanctuary, but for us, this is our, our sanctuary where certain things that are sacred to us happen, like communion, or like weddings when we, when we ask the bride and groom to step into the sanctuary because we're saying something holy is happening. So we set up these railings and we give the visual of the gate. <coughs> and we even have a gate. We were talking about it yesterday with, with Ed. When, when he was here, he was saying that when you did communion at the rail, there would be a gate that would come and you would use it for communion. But we are the sheep. And this is our pen. That's what I, I love about traditional churches. I know I've gone to contemporary churches and some of that symbolism of church gets lost. Of course, it doesn't make us who we are, but it reminds us who we are and who we ought to be. That what happens up here is sacred. That there is sanctuary here. That you can find refuge in this place. And as a church, we should be careful about who we allow to come through the gate. To lead the church. To be our shepherd. In the Old Testament, we see where God had promised to scatter his flock. They were looking at the Babylonian takeover. And God said that they would be scattered near and far. But God promised that one day he would bring his flock back together. There was this promise that a shepherd would come, one who would join both the Jews and the Gentiles together. This promised Messiah is one that we get to celebrate and why we, we celebrate the Easter season. Jesus laid down his life to bring salvation so that we may come together as the flock. John proclaims here in the 10th chapter, really, he's proclaiming the, the Trinity. We have the gatekeeper, who we can see is the Father. We see the shepherd, who is Jesus. And then we see the gate, who is the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus says that he is the I am. He is all three. Just as the Father and the Spirit are all three. So I invite you to turn in your Bibles if you've already closed it to the 10th chapter of John as we look closer at verses 1 through 10. 
And Jesus is really continuing his words from the previous verse, which is 9, chapter 9, verse 41. But this section, it gets split off because it gets the title of the Good Shepherd. And really what Jesus is doing here, he is addressing the Pharisees' situation that they created indirectly. And through this figure of speech about sheep and the thieves who lead them astray. And Jesus is saying that anyone who does not enter the gate but by any other way is a thief and a destroyer of life. Jesus is telling us that there are no shortcuts or alternative ways to salvation. And he points to the one who enters by the gate is the one true shepherd. The shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper is the one who opens the gate for the shepherd. The shepherd's identity is confirmed when the gatekeeper lets the shepherd through. And the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his sheep by name and leads them out. The sheep follow because they know their shepherd's voice. And just before the 10th chapter of John, we see John... 9, where he heals the blind man. And we, we talked about this weeks ago, about the, the blind man who was born blind from, well, from birth. He was, he was blind, and the Pharisees and those religious leaders, they're all debating who sinned. But it wasn't the, the blind man who sinned, but it was the, the Savior's voice who, heal, who healed him. The blind man listened to the shepherd and obeyed. And in doing so, the blind man saw. But more than that, the blind man found his shepherd, the promised Messiah. We promise him much, much more than just restoring of sight. But he promises him eternal life, which is a promise to all of us. Jesus says that he is also the gate to the sheep. All who came before him, offering any other way to get to heaven, were thieves and bandits. The sheep, the ones who listened for God's voice, did not listen to them because God was not with them when they spoke. When they were walking with Christ, we, as the sheep, can discern false teachers and prophets, those that are leading us astray. Because we know who our shepherd is. Because we also know the gatekeeper. That's why it's important for us to study the word of God so that when someone gets up here and tells you that this is what it means, we can discern that for ourselves. We know who our God is before we ever enter into our sanctuary. We know who and what to listen for. More than the, the gatekeeper, Jesus says that he is also the gate. The one and only way to salvation. And he repeats that the thief comes to kill and destroy. Jesus came so that we may 
have life and life abundantly. And in verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his own life for the sheep. So we see Christ in this passage of the good shepherd. We see the Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three in one. Jesus says he is all three, and yet says the Holy Spirit is coming after he departs from the earth. And we see here that this chapter is full of I am statements that point to his divine nature of being fully God and fully man. The passage which Patty read this morning from 1 Peter 2, verses 19 through 25, we see that Peter is pointing to the shepherd, the shepherd who came to save his sheep that were out there wandering. This shepherd would come and suffer unmanageable affliction and death to save his sheep by laying down his own life. Peter is connecting Jesus to the suffering of believers. If we listen to God's voice, we proclaim <laughs> Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We will suffer. Not motivating words from Peter, is it? But when we suffer, we are promised that we will be taken care of. Even in the midst of all of that suffering that we experience, God will be with us. In this life, we always suffer. For some of us, we suffer from disease, others from illnesses. There are those who are blind and those who are lame. There are some that suffer from economic or social injustices. And others will suffer just for their belief in Jesus. But in all of that, what Peter is pointing to here is that we are never alone. And there is the promise that our shepherd, the gatekeeper, the gate, will not forget us. Now God doesn't promise that he will remove all of our suffering. But he does promise us an eternity without it. We have a calling to love and serve our neighbor, even when they may never worship with us. They may never enter into the sanctuary as we have. Our neighbor may not even believe as we do. They may never become a member of our church. They might not ever come to our picnics or yard sales or other fun things that we put on. They might stand by the side and call us names or try to discourage us. But we are called as Christians to be like Jesus and to speak this truth so that others can hear the voice of their shepherds. There are those who are suffering but do not have the confidence of faith. There are those who have yet to hear their shepherd who has been calling their name. There are those who have not received the gate or the Holy Spirit. And they do not know the gatekeeper, the Father. 
He was allowed the shepherd to lead them into the sanctity of life. There are those who do not want to hear the call, and yet the shepherd keeps calling their name. So I encourage you to not put off what God has called you for. Do not put off what you think can just wait until tomorrow. I encourage you to hear the call of the Good Shepherd and heed that call in your life. If you feel the gatekeeper, the shepherd, the gate, calling out your name, calling to you to come home, don't wait to come. There is nothing we've done this week or in our past even if it's criminal, that can separate us from the love of the gatekeeper in Christ Jesus. There may be consequences to our foolish decisions, but there is no condemnation in Christ. I invite you to come and find refuge in the Father's house. The Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want as we read in Psalm 23. So I would invite you to come and find sanctuary at the foot of the cross. Come and know your shepherd's voice. And with that I say, come Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Now let us lift up our joys and concerns together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for the Good Shepherd who has called all of us, who is calling those who have yet to hear. Lord, help open our eyes and our ears so that we may see and hear our shepherd calling. Lord God, we lift up these praises to you today. We give you thanks for the much needed rain that our ground needed. Lord, we give you thanks as we get closer to the season to plant our gardens and our fields, and we ask for a blessing for all those who work the land so that we may eat and enjoy the product of their labors. Lord God, we lift up these concerns to you. Lord, we lift up Dale Hurley. We lift up Donald for traveling mercies as he is going to Virginia today. Lord, we pray for Shirley Smith, for Kelly, Kyle, and Erica. We lift up Betty Pipkin and Scarlett. We lift up Ann Bell, Steph, Tony, and we ask for traveling mercies for Ben and Becca. Lord, we pray for all those who are suffering around the world. Those that are suffering from disease and famine and those who suffer from persecution for belief in Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering from illness and are sick and shut in and are unable to join us here in church on Sunday mornings. May you be with them and you strengthen them and you give them peace. Lord God, we pray all of these things, both joys and concerns, to the one who hears all of our prayers, the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven.
invite you to stand as you are able as we sing, Great is thy faithfulness, hymn number 140.
grace to all those who give out of their abundance and out of their willingness to see that the gospel is preached from this place and is taken into the world so that we may share it with all of our neighbors so that all may hear the good news and hear the voice of their shepherd calling their name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to switch it up on you this morning, and I, I thank our talented musicians for putting up with me, but I just felt that hymn number 348 would be a, a much better fit for a closing of today's service. And I would, and we're going to do something a little bit different too, because we don't always do this. But as always, the altar rail is open if you would like to come and pray, to come and be closer to your Savior who's calling you, your shepherd, who's calling you into that sheep pen, that <coughs> sanctuary, so that we can feel close to God. Even through our suffering, we can hear our Savior calling. So if you feel led and you would like to come forward and, and pray, you may, and, and if you would like, I, I'll pray with you. But let us join together and sing number 348, Softly and Tenderly, Jesus is Calling.
Do you hear your shepherd calling you? Calling you to come home, come to the sanctuary where you are safe. May God be with you. May your shepherd lead you from this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh.